This is my outside shop, and this is where I do pretty much all of my sanding. I wanted to review with you today sanders and sanding and essentially just hand sanding. Uh, my biggest concern with sanding is, you know, obviously number one, safety, and number two, cleanliness. And so this is outside. I've got a custom built downdraft blower and sander that I put together. So this is essentially those uh, shelving frames from Menards that I put together, one, two, three, got some pegboard, cut it out, and then I've got an inch and a half blower in here, and then my blower outports here to the outside. And so I can do all my sanding here and I get all the uh, dust, really, really fine particles to go out outside here. And my preferred sander, and, and granted I've been doing this for a while, so I, I bought a professional grade sander. This is the Bosch 5-inch uh, sander. This was about almost $300. I bought this because it's a variable speed. It was one of the highest rated sanders in fine woodworking. And it's got uh, really great stability. And I use this all the time as my main sander. I, I go through different discs. You can buy different plates. You can buy soft plates, hard plates. I got a medium plate on here so that way I can go over edges if I have to. I also have a, a bunch of different non-variable speed sanders just through the years I've accumulated. Makita makes a good single speed sander. Uh, the Ryobi stuff from Home Depot is not what the Ryobi was uh, from a few years ago. And then I also got a Craftsman variable speed sander which I actually like. Uh, this does pretty well. These all have dust attachments. But with the, the downdraft sander, sometimes I'll put a fan behind me so I can get all the air out of here. I always do wear a dust mask when I'm sanding. I've also got a couple finished sanders. I've got an old uh, Black & Decker, and then I've got a Porter Cable finish sander. And for guitar finishing, I'm not a really big fan of having the finish sander. I think you can get the same finish, and, and better finish even, with a variable speed sander and then an actual sanding pad you know so you can take the 400 grit 600 grit or you know 200 grit go over the edges go over the top and sides real quick and what i'm doing next what's nice about this block is it's flexible it gets into the grooves i also have this speedmaster sanding block as well and this helps go over the top or edges to make sure everything's flat so i've got a lot of different sanding tools here but really my favorite is the you know the Bosch go-to and if you're just starting out I would go with like a Craftsman variable speed sander you know, you're not going to spend a whole ton of money on it but you've got the warranty with Sears you know the professional grade equipment this has lasted me a long time and I've had some really good luck with it one thing one really big point of caution is do not let your sanding gear fall onto the floor it'll knock off the pad it'll knock off the, the variable speed that's what happened with the sander that I had and essentially the sanders ruined at that point. The repair, you know, they, they make tools cheap enough to that the repair isn't worth uh, keeping the tool. So always make sure that you've got an area that if, you're, if you put your sander down, it's not going to fall. What's nice about this sanding table that I made is it's on three sides. It's got a lip. So as soon, you know, even if I put my sander down, it's not going to get knocked down. I've got my power strip here, so all my power is up here. The other piece I wanted to mention is that you need really good lighting when you're sanding. I've got lights above me, I've got a shop light above me, I've also got a, a light here that'll highlight any uh, scratches in the, in the grain. And then I also position this table specifically to be close to the outdoors because now I've got three different sources of light. i got light coming from the shop lights, i got this light, and then I've got the outdoor light so that I can see any fine scratches on the work as I'm sanding. So you just want to make sure that as you're sanding you've got enough light so you can actually understand you know, what the finish is looking like. With the or orbital sander, sometimes if you've got a little scratch or something on the paper, it'll make little zings all over the place. So that's why when you got the three sources of light, you can really see the work very well and understand you know, how far you you are along with the sanding. When I sand, I usually go uh, 80 grit to 120 to 180, 220, 300, 400, 600. And I usually stop at 600 when I'm sanding. What's nice about this, you just rip the pad off, flop it back on and you can keep going. So I usually do all that sanding depending on uh, what I'm working on. I know with burls you need a lot more sanding and you get a lot different type of scratch patterns. But if you're just using flame or quilted maple sometimes you can skip a couple papers as you go from like 80 to 220 to 400. 
just based on the softness of the wood. But always make sure you've got a, a clean environment when you're standing and you've got a healthy environment. That you know What's nice about having the door open at times is I, I get a natural breeze and it takes all the sand, all the dust particles out. So this is my sanding station, again, custom built you know, with a one and a half inch blower. And I've got the output port here. This output port you know, shoots all the dust outside to the backyard here. And I've got a really clean environment. I kind of create my own draft.